Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is part 5 of the self-driving car with lane detection using Raspberry Pi. In the previous videos, we have found the curve value and in this video, we will learn how to improve and stabilize it. We will also show the final result on the original image. So let's get started. So as we discussed before, relying completely on the histogram is not a very good idea because we might result in this problem. So how can we fix this problem? We can fix this by getting the center point of our image first, uh, of our path first. So how can we find the center point of our path? Well, the good news is that we have already written the code for it. And the code is basically get histogram. So what we will do is instead of getting the histogram of the complete image, we will get the histogram of the bottom part of our image. So if we look at our uh, image over here and if we look at the bottom part, you can see that at the bottom part, if we do the submission of only the first two, uh, what do you call rows, then we can find that the base point of our image is somewhere over here. So instead of summation of all the pixels, if we sum only the first two, then we will get these two values, these two, these two, and these two. And if we average these four columns, we will get the center point over here. So this way we can find the center of our path. So all we have to do is that we have to limit the summation to a certain range at the bottom. To do that, we will just change the code a little bit because over here we are doing the summation of the complete image. So what we can do is we can uh, we can define a variable here by the name region and we can say that let's say by default it is one. So if it's one it will do it for the complete image. So if region is equals to one then we will do it for the complete image else we are going to else we are going to do it for the amount of region that was defined so instead of defining the exact value of the pixels we are going to define the region so we will say that okay do it for the one fourth region at the bottom or do it for the one fifth region or one third region so to do that we can simply write here image shape image dot shape at zero and then we can divide it by the region so that will give us that particular region and the rest of it remains the same so let's go back and let's actually uh, give the percentage here as well so our percentage minimum percentage is equals to let's say 0.5 so then what we can do is we can define the region as well region is equals to one fourth so if we run this now uh, actually we have to do one more thing before we can do that uh, because we are displaying as well we have to divide it by the region as well so region divided by four so there you go so if we look at our histogram now, it's only taking the summation of the last part, which is one fourth of our bottom region. So this will give us the center point of our path. Once we have this, we can apply the histogram of on the complete image and get the base point of that. And then we can subtract these two together to find our curve value. So if we go back here, we can simply copy this. And here we can say that this is our midpoint and this is our uh, base point, let's say. And for our midpoint, our values will remain the same. And for this, we are going to increase the criteria a little bit. And then we are going to put the region as one. So now what we can do is we can simply say that print base point minus midpoint so this will be our curve value so let's run that 
So this is the base point of our curvature. And as you can see here, uh, why are we getting two values? Let me check. We are also printing something else. Yeah, we are printing the base point. So let's remove that and let's print it again. So here you can see when it's left, when it's going towards the left, you can see negative values. And once it's going towards the right, you can see positive values. And you can see when it's coming straight, it is coming back towards zero. So next we are just going to rename these so that we can understand them a little bit more. So we will write here curve average point and this will be our middle point so let's write middle point and then we can simply say that our curve raw is equals to curve average average spellings are wrong so average minus middle points now the reason we are saying this is curve raw because we want to apply the next step which is averaging step four so we are doing averaging because we want to have a smooth transition not uh, random values going from very high to very low so if we are doing average and if there is some noise it will try to reduce that using averaging so what we can do is we can put all of these curve values in a list. So we can say that curve list is equals to empty. Actually, we have to define this uh, before we start. And this should be here. Uh, actually, it has to be in both the cases. So then we have to put it here. So curve list here and then uh, no, over here. Then we can say that curve lists dot append, and we are going to append the curve raw value. And we will say that if the length of our curve list is greater than average value, then we are going to curve list dot pop. The very last value uh, the very first value uh, which means that we don't want to exceed the length of uh, for example 10 values so if we want to average 10 values then we will write here average 10 is equals to uh, average value is equals to 10 and if we want to average 5 values we will just write here 5 so it will always keep the list uh, length as 5 or 10 or whatever we define now at the end we will just find the curve so curve is equals integer of sum and we are going to find the sum of our curve list and we will divide it by the length uh, length of our curve list so this will give us the average so the final step is actually displaying so uh, there's not much intuition going on in display so what i will do is i have written the, down the code and i will just copy paste it and you can go through it if you don't understand anything you can leave it in the comments and i will be happy to help now uh, one thing that we do have to change to actually display uh, is the warp uh, function because in the warp function as i mentioned before we can do inverse as well so uh, we are going to inverse our image so that we can display it on the final uh, result so that it looks good so we are going to add the inverse function here inverse is equals to by default it will be false and if we want to inverse we can say that if inverse then we will change the points position that's it so we will copy this we will paste it here and this will be points 2 this will be points 1 and then we will say that else we are going to do this so that's it that's what you have to change in the warp image and the rest of it should work fine so let me copy that so the final step is step 5 is display uh, 
final step is step five, which is display and I will paste the code. Now here we do not have W, T and W, Y don't we have? Okay, uh, first of all, we will add the option of display here. Display and we will put it as, let's say two. So we will have different values. We will have zero, it will not display anything. One, it will just display the result. And two, it will display the complete pipeline. So that is a one way to do it. And here I wrote WT, so let's write WT here as well. WT and WT. And so that is it. And then we have image results. Image results, we can make a copy of our image image results is equals to image dot copy and anything else that is left uh, let's skip the frequency for now okay and now the last thing we will need is the stack image function now this is the function that I wrote a long time ago. It basically stacks all these images together instead of having them in separate windows. It will put all of them in one window. So all you have to do is you have to say that stack images, you will give it a scale that I want it to be this size. And then you give it all the images you want to stack. So this will be one row and then this will be another row. So I will have the stacking function here as well so that you can use it uh, for now i will just copy and paste so here in the utilities at the end i will add the stacking function and there you go so as i mentioned before you just need a scale and the the images array and that's it it will stack everything together you don't need to go into the detail of how this works it's just another function uh, you just need to know how you can use this so here if the display is two it will show us the pipeline if the display is one it will just show us the result and uh, if it's nothing it will show us nothing at the end and also we need to send out the final curve value so here we will return the curve value so let's run this So there you go and this is our uh, final result so you can see we have stacked all the images together and it m looks much nicer than just having all these images moving around and of course you can scale it up and down based on the requirement so what we can do is we can hide all of these images that we were showing before so over here we can remove these and now we can just run it and there we have it. So we can also remove the image over here. And now if we go to our get lane curve image, so what we will do is, first of all, we will get the curve. So curve and we will print it out. So print curve. And then we can define the amount of display we want. So display, if we put as one, it will just show us the result. There you go. It's just showing the result. And if we put it as zero, it will not display anything. We will only have the track bar and it will give us the value of the curve. So when we are running it in real time, then we want to display zero. And if we are debugging or we are tuning, we might want to display one or two. So this is it for today's video. In the final part, we are going to implement this code and uh, we will tune the parameters to get the optimal results on the self-driving car. So we are going to use our Raspberry Pi to finally implement this. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.